Okay, so let's begin. Hair restoration, you have to have a team that's dedicated and all the time with you. That's my feeling with this. So here's my face site where I have it dedicated to the face and here is my hair site dedicated to hair. It's completely separated out. That's the first foremost thing. Now, what is important here? Let's talk a little bit about the evolution of my face ad so you can see where I've come through a lot of reading, a lot of trial, a lot of error. This is my first ad. It's terrible. It's a big mess. It's a big mess of 50 photos and you try to show a, an otoplasty, you try to show a, a rhinoplasty, a skin peel, a facelift. By the time you're done, the, the list of menus, it means nothing to the consumer. The consumer looks at this and says, you've got to be kidding me. So, same thing. I, I, did, I actually at least branded the color. I started to get color branding. But at the same time, if you look at this, it's the same mess that I just showed you before. So we need to start focusing this down. Here's a focused ad, the face specialist. And what you're seeing here is a catchy term, the anti-surgery, because people don't want to have surgery nowadays. You need to focus that energy so that people can understand what is, remember, you got to understand what's in it for me. The patient's thinking, what's in it for me? You don't want to go out there and sell something that doesn't make sense to them. I have 20 lasers, who cares? What do those lasers do for you? Why are you different? Why are you better? Niche market yourself. And so this is sub-specializing and focusing on fat grafting, which is my forte. My hair ads initially are very vague, state-of-the-art hair restoration. And then, how about bothered by hair loss? We deliver natural results. It's the biggest fear there. And this is one of a series showing my corrective work that I showed you earlier. So the other thing is understand your consumer. That may be a very unusual comment, but it's the truth. Because if you think, when I, if you ever have purchased my books, they're geared to the surgeon. They're geared, they're not... 50 authors, they're not 50,000 pages, they're three to four chapters. How do you walk in, how do you do it, how do you get out with 16 to 30 videos? That's what a surgeon wants, so I think like a surgeon. When I'm dealing with a patient, I think like a patient. What does that patient want? The patient wants for you to understand their, their, their ideas, their, their perspective. So what, is, what am I talking about? Well, first of all, with hair, I move completely to internet because most men do not go look at magazines to go find a hair guy. They look at internet and so, the print ads for my face I've maintained, I've maintained them in terms of the, uh, uh, for brand equity to maintain those print ads, but only skeletally so for face. For hair, it's all moved to internet. Here's the other thing that's important. 80% of my face work is female. 20% of it is for male. And the reverse is true for hair. I do a lot of women for hair because I know how to, how to uh, approach that, that market. But understand that as you know, it's maybe somewhat of a contrivance out there, but it's true, is that men tend to be more technically minded, women tend to be more emotional. So if you look at my face sites, 80% emotional connection, testimonials, patients talking about my services. My hair site has that, but it's breaking it down into excruciating detail while, why I'm better at every single small focus of the procedure. That's what men want to know. Why are you better at point A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, all the way down? And that's what I do. So let's explain what I'm talking about. This is my hair site with the menu opened up on the left. Oh my God, that's detailed. Well, this is describing exactly why my donor closure is better, donor harvest is better, recipient site creation, graft dissection, graft placement, anesthesia. Every little nuance is, is placed there, not for marketing, but for education. People want to be educated. The consumer wants to know why you're better without bad-mouthing another competitor. You need to understand how to deliver that message. This is a whole section on hair loss. Things that you probably will never encounter as a hair restoration surgeon, but you should know. Trichotillomania, uh, you know, African hair, hair diseases, unusual things, alopecia areata. So my consumer, and I believe it or not, I encounter every year several scarring alopecias, alopecia areatas, et cetera, and we're not dermatologists. So I think we have a responsibility to know that information or be able to refer it appropriately so you don't transplant a scarring alopecia. So the idea here is giving that information out to the consumer to say, hey, I understand all of this. And you should, as a transplant surgeon, understand it. So this is the other level of education. It's the technical details on the site. The way that I position myself is I don't do 20 cases a week. I'm not interested in doing that. There is no ability to quality control and if you don't, unless you're gonna outsource your staff or you're gonna have multiple staff members where you can't control it. I do two to three a week and by doing that, I'm able to control the quality because my cutters are with me all the time. If they're not available that day, we are not cutting that day. We are not doing a transplant. We do one single one a day. Now that's also very different if you position yourself from the person that advertises hair transplants, they do two a year. Well, how the hell do you maintain quality if you don't have a staff dedicated to it? You may not have a staff dedicated to rhinoplasty, and that's fine. 
But the key here is you need to have a dedicated staff to hair restoration to get good, and it's going to take you a while to build it. But you must have that dedication yourself. If you're not dedicated to hair restoration, don't do it. Don't dabble. This is not one of those things that you think, oh, as a surgeon I can do rhinoplasty, therefore I can go ahead and do hair restoration. You're doing your patients a disservice. You must be dedicated to this. Marketing is only part of what this is all about. The other fundamental element that I'm trying to get across is understanding how much dedication, how much passion you should have. If you're not passionate about something, please do not do it for the sake of your patients. That's the key here. So I'm not trying to be preachy, just trying to get there and have you understand I always think like a consumer. Put yourself in the position of the patient. What are they thinking? What are they experiencing? What are they feeling? And feeling is something maybe difficult for a lot of surgeons, but you need to be there. Focus your brand. Focus your brand and divide it out for the areas that may be contributing to brand confusion in your marketplace. Thank you very much.